Hello, I'm Martha Hess, a member of the class of 1967. For the last several months, I've been sharing stories about the history of Anderson Hall as we anticipate the renovation of this 142-year-old icon. Fall has arrived on the Maryville College campus, and this morning I've been picking up leaves under the maple tree in front of Anderson. That was a good spot to be able to see the original office of the building that was constructed in 1870. The president was there, and all of the administrative functions from admissions to graduation were held there. Indeed, that office served student records for 131 years. When I arrived on campus in 1964, I met Dr. Frank McClellan there, Dean McClellan. I'm sure many of you remember him. He came back to the college in 1937 as Dean of Students and then became Dean of the College in 1957. For 30 years, except for a brief time when he served as a Marine in World War II, Dr. McClellan advised and encouraged students and no doubt dispensed a bit of discipline along the way. But Dr. McClellan had a lighter side. No one enjoyed barm warming more than Dr. McClellan. He would dress up in overalls, blacken his teeth, put on a straw hat, and enjoy the festivities with the students and the staff and the faculty. One of Dr. McClellan's valued colleagues was Viola Lightfoot, the registrar. Together, they managed admissions and records for many years. Miss Lightfoot came to Maryville College in 1930 as a freshman and was immediately given two student help jobs. The first one, interestingly enough, was in the registrar's office. The second was serving as secretary to Dr. Samuel Tyndale Wilson who had retired just a few months earlier as the fifth president of Maryville College. Dr. Wilson was writing the second half of his history of the college, second century beginnings. Miss Lightfoot typed every word of that second book and she helped him with his daily correspondence. In the spring of Miss Lightfoot's senior year, 1934, the unthinkable happened. The registrar, Miss Anna Jones, died in April and Miss Lightfoot completed the records for her class. When the students were leaving for home or new jobs, Miss Lightfoot returned to the registrar's office and did not leave for 40 years. She was patient with students and faculty and parents and served the college well. She always looked for ways, little ways, to make a difference in the life of a student. During the 1940s, during World War II, all materials were hard to come by, and one year Miss Lightfoot had difficulty finding ribbon to put around the diplomas. Finally, a week before commencement, she called a company out of state, and the representative there assured her that they had orange and garnet ribbon and would send it immediately. The box arrived two days before commencement, and when she opened the box, the ribbon was yellow and red. And instead of just pushing it aside, she took it home that night and cut it in the 18-inch lengths and dyed it orange and garnet. The next night, she pressed the ribbon and then tied the diplomas so that there was a bit of color in commencement that year. Dr. McClellan and Miss Lightfoot are legends of Anderson Hall. But more importantly, they are representatives of a strong and dedicated staff who have served this college with compassion and loyalty for almost 200 years. I hope you'll come back to campus this fall. Perhaps you can pick up a few leaves under the maple tree and wander through the first floor looking at the many offices that belong to the Dean of Students, the Dean of Women and Men, the Treasurer, and many others. And remember the staff members who made a difference in your life.